part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. Right, the Krypton Report. That's us. Uh, it's been a little bit. Happy December. I am your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the Man of Tomorrow. This is the Krypton Report. You're all Superman DC podcast, and with me, if you haven't met, is the only man who can make a snowball bounce, Mister James Cole. What's up, buddy? Yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky. But... <laughs> Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. We're going to have some fun. We got a cool, cool thing signed up here, signed up for here, planned out here. But first, we're going to talk about some news. I have compiled a list, but as of now, uh, December 1st, there is a crap ton of DC films on Netflix. They just, like, dropped it. Um, basically, almost their entire catalog, it feels like. So currently on Netflix, we have Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84, Shazam, Birds of Prey, The Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, Shazam Fury of the Gods, and The Batman. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's clear that that they the the time they've spent searching for um income routes to to draw some extra money from the DC brand is is why they sent it over there and i'm sure netflix was willing to pay especially how um popular snyder is over there oh yeah yeah i mean that's um, that's what we're seeing i mean the ccxp stuff uh like rebel moon stole the show of course it did um i saw uh uh ray fisher come out on stage and he was having a great time and i don't know portuguese but they were chanting seaborgue and i can only imagine what that might be uh you think <laughs> like it's, you think it's something loud good? chanting <laughs> you think it's good <laughs> uh, oh i'm sure i'm sure oh i'm sure they were <laughs> chanting cyborg ah Ah. Chanting cyborg, yeah, yes, that thing, yeah, <laughs> yes, that thing. <laughs> so it was really cool. Um, so I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that helped with getting a couple of his movies over there too. He, he's he's gonna be that actor. I'm really big in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> Which, well, <laughs> well, that's in Brazil, but they speak Portuguese. You know what? I, I was uh, man, James undercut the joke. <laughs> But yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm really big in Brazil, you know, like how the Brian Sessa um, Orchestra is really big in Japan. Uh, but uh, I heard that over there that Man of Steel has like the most thumbs up of anything on Netflix. That's awesome. And yeah, and um, that. Uh, Suicide Squad is one of the top watched um, DC movies. Yeah. Not The Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Okay. So I'm logging into my Netflix right now as we're talking. Happy December, James. Happy December, Tyler. All right. Tis the season. To be judged. I'm I'm looking at the top 10 movies in the U.S. today. Number five is Suicide Squad. Ooh, it was number, number six eight? earlier. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> and we forgot one. Number eight is Black Adam. So Black Adam is also on Netflix. And then number mm-hmm. 10 is The Suicide Squad. So, <clears throat> yeah. I, I miss the old style of rating. Um, I don't like just the thumbs up, thumbs down. I think it's too generic. Because, like, most of the stuff I watch is more of a thumbs up, you know? So I like a little bit more. Yeah. Well, so now they have, at least over there, they have three ratings. They have thumbs down, thumbs up, and two thumbs up. 
So, you know, at least it's like, if you love it, you can give two thumbs up. If you like it, you can give it one thumb up. And if you don't, you can give it thumbs down because I'm the same way. Most things I tend to watch, I tend to at least like and enjoy, you know? Mm -hmm. So most things would get a a single thumbs up from me. But Man of Steel, that's a double thumbs up. That's why, you know, I like the IMDb, (laughs) IMDb rating scales. Speaking of Suicide Squad, we got a trailer for the Suicide Squad anime. You see this? Yes, I did. Did you watch the trailer? <laughs> I did. Cool. Tell me about it. I Silence. Did. <laughs> I saw images. Um, I just, I didn't. Honestly, I forgot to watch it. I mean, it's no big deal. Like everyone knows, I'm not a huge anime fan. But we saw Peacemaker, King Shark, Harley, Deadshot, uh, some pictures of Clayface. I even forgot they were doing this, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, Suicide Squad is- Isika. I- I'm sorry if I'm butchering um, a Japanese word. Um, but they- it's it stands for, like, other world. Mm. So it's like the, the Suicide Squad, um, they... Are go- they go to like this Japanese fantasy world, which is another another world, and it's got like, pre- it's just got like uh, different kinds of um, uh, creatures, beings, uh, sentient like uh, dragons and uh, um, people like warthog people and different things. So. Uh, and something that looks like ogre esque. So it's just gonna be it's gonna literally be like a uh the Suicide Squad in a different <clears throat> in a different universe. All right. Very anime style. Sounds fun. So my kids like the anime, you know. I, yeah. I liked anime growing up and they, they both really are into anime. So um like Bell's, uh, Bell's one of Bell's favorite movies right now is the uh, Catwoman Hunted. I gotta get through that. Um, it's a good movie. Um, it is a it is a good movie. It just takes. Uh, I mean, if if you're not interested in anime, it it's actually really it's really quality anime. Um, you know, it's it's not just uh, a generic. Um, anime i don't want to say generic because but i'm but you know in in the same styles of multiple episodes of things like um avatar the last airbender dragon ball uh naruto um uh like bleach and um you know people will understand a lot of the similarities and 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 the fact that they have like dozens and dozens upon dozens upon dozens of episodes if not uh hundreds of episodes you know so it's a certain it's a certain anime style and we we have an understanding of of uh television animation versus movie animation yeah Uh, the the quality the time the effort that's able to be put into those things um so the the style of anime in that is really good and um you know compared to like things like batman ninja batman ninja is a very particular style that's a that's, that one's hard to watch man <laughs> and and i don't think that catwoman hunted is near that near that line of animation style which i think would make it much more bearable for you to watch mm. 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 <laughs> I mean, you watch a lot of cartoons anyways. This one's just <laughs> leaning a little anime style. You know what I mean? But it's not, yep. it's really not full on anime. Like this um, Suicide Squad movie is going to be. <laughs> but the quality of this uh, animation looks really great. Mm, we, we shall see. Speaking of animation. 
we got if another it wasn't trailer. For the holidays, I'd have Justice League Ruby Part Two, but I don't have that yet. Mm-hmm. We got our next trailer for Crisis. Yeah, the one that disappeared that day. The 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 trailer that is for the first part, I be, is interesting. I haven't watched them enough to compare everything, but it definitely looks like the first trailer, the part Crisis Part One is going to involve the uh, Earth Three and the <clears throat> what do you call it? The I'm a blinking what they're called. Crime Syndicate. Oh, uh, the Crime Syndicate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like. We see them a lot. We see the Flash in trouble. Of course, we see the Flash in trouble. And then we got our release dates. And I find this very interesting, James. Because January 9th, the digital will drop. The Blu-ray will drop January 23rd. <clears throat> so they're going back yeah, to the staggered doing release. that. Yeah, I think they're going to try and push that digital again, you know? And I hate it because it makes me want to double dip. Yeah, well, I mean, if if you get it, I'll watch it. Well, yeah, of course. I'll but... be waiting for the... Yeah, of course, yeah. That's what if you guys you always it, do. Tyler bought it. We'll watch it. <laughs> but I will wait until the physical release. I'm definitely going to buy and it. Get I, already, it. I already pre-ordered the physical from Amazon. Usually I'll probably just go buy it at Walmart, but I do it just because in case I forget or get busy, I'll, it'll, you know, ship and come. So, yeah. Well, these days you got to get there. You got to get there like the week it drops because they remodeled Walmarts to look kind of like crappy Myers, and <laughs> they eliminated so much of their physical media DVD Blu-ray section. Oh yeah, if it's, you don't it's if still you don't, a section there, but if it's you not don't get positive. it when it first comes out, like it just becomes it just gets lost in the fold and then stuff that you think would be available to find, you can't find. They just don't they just it's like they just sell stuff and then whatever's left over they'll keep. Like Yeah. And it sucks because it's like physical media, we want to buy it, but you don't have it. So why else do you think we order it from Amazon? Or like, you know, I could yeah, order stuff from Walmart and pick up in store, but whatever. So that's the release on the crisis. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's so all. So you had the chance to watch the trailer now. Last time we spoke, uh the that trailer. So this this trailer that came out was a trailer that was leaked the same day prior to the trilogy trailer announcement that came out that day because that was the only one that was officially released um but now they released part one trailer yep so what did you think of of the part one trailer as opposed to the trilogy trailer um because there is a <laughs> lot of characters in the part one um, I mean it definitely sounded like yeah. that was George Newbern's voice on one of the Supermen. Um, but it, I, like I said, I haven't sat down and compared the trailer with the trilogy trailer to really see if I can dissect what's in the first movie compared to what's going to be in the other movies. Well, I don't mean the dissect like what's because <clears throat> I, it's it's clearly going to be it's clearly going to be a more it's it's going to be a faithful adaptation of crisis in a manner that fits with um uh that fits with what they've been doing in their animated universe yeah um so but as a three part and you know just kind of from the look of the monitor and there being multiple versions of these characters from different earths um like and and the antimatter wave and everything they're doing a, a fairly faithful adaptation we'll see how many beats they actually tend to uh, want to hit because um you know the crime syndicate i i believe if i remember correctly had a small part in an early chunk of crisis but like i said it was a small part 
I mean, um, it's been what three, four years since we read that. Like we looked at it back when they did the crisis, um, stuff on TV. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been a few years. Um, so I I don't I'm I'm game for it. Like one trailer, I feel like I don't know how where Flash is. What happened to Flash? Like, will he make it through the first? crisis than you know die in part two i don't know right like yeah I'm, I'm interested to see how faithful they go with it um because if they're doing crisis clearly the next bit of animation is going to be something different if it's not folded into the dcu i think it's gonna get folded into the dcu i think that's um, kind of why they're doing crisis but at the same time they would have had a plan. The animation crisis. division has been different. It has been, but you know they're supposed to be the synergy, but supposedly else worlds as well. So I I don't know because I feel like we've talked about this. I mean, think how long, how long it was. What ten years that the whatever that the last connected animated you know verse was because justice oh when it kicked off uh yeah it was around 12 or it was like 8 years 12 it was I want to say it was 13 it had to be a 13 or early 14 we just did all these reviews we can't keep shit straight I think it was (laughs) I think it was the end of 13 with Justice League War and Flashpoint Paradox well yeah remembering every single release date is pushing it a little um so and then it ended in 2020 right uh yeah i believe so yeah it ended in 2020 so i mean it's a good seven years (laughs) um of (laughs) of multiple layered films and then you know the tomorrow verse started in what 2021 uh it sounds right with uh man of tomorrow yeah I think it came out early 2021. Let me... Excuse me. Double check. I'm a little slow today. But there was just... There's a lot of characters in in the Monitor ship. No, it came uh, out... It started in 2020. Started in 2020. Oh, okay. So it started the same year the other one ended. Um, but so here we are in twenty twenty. We'll say twenty twenty four. We're ending it. So it had four years with one to maybe two movies a year, and we've only had Superman, Man of Tomorrow, the Justice Society, Society, yeah. Um. The two-parter slash one of Long Halloween. So I'll count that as one movie. Yeah. Then the Green Lantern film, the Legion film. And now, uh, then we had uh, World World, which I still was disappointed with. That's six movies and then seven, eight, nine. So in this, it'll conclude with nine movie run. And then nine, we'll say 9.5. We'll throw in Con- with Constantine. <laughs> right. It was a short, but it connects the two different ones. So 9.5. That's not bad. But still, like, if, I mean, we had like that many just Batman movies, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, with the last connected universe. So, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Because we, um, we had what? We had the Damien trilogy, two Teen Titans. Two Justice League Darks. Uh-huh. Uh, Justice League War, Justice League Throne of Atlantis, uh, Justice League versus the Teen Titans. Um, the death is, the two deaths of Superman, or the one death, depending yeah. if, if you want to look at it. Yeah, um, the death and return of Superman. The Suicide Squad. I was going to say, if I, could, if I could see my... Shelf from here, I could read them off. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to go all by you know memory. So I mean, yep, that, that's 
you know, it's a good chunk of movies. Yeah, the last one, the last universe had a lot of movies. Um, this one really went by quick. I mean, there's a lot of things we, you know, we talked about a lot of things being done off screen, um, progressing time off screen, um, which, you know, they did great with Young Justice, but they did horribly um, with with that last, with the tomorrow verse. Yeah, they just made it jump. Like, I mean, even like characters who got introduced in the last continuity that we didn't really get to see, but the tomorrow verse was just like, bloop. So, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But okay. Um, so today, we're going to do something different. We're going to talk about Superman, yes. But we are going to talk about songs. We ha- are created our own Sounds of the Man of Steel list. That's right. So, I scoured the internet... And looked up songs about Superman. Now, I compiled a list of about 21 songs. Now, there might be some more that you might think beyond this list. I get it. There's a couple that had the that the song was named Superman, but I had my criteria. And my criteria was the song had to reflect the character, make references to the character. And feel it was kind of about the character or the spirit of the character. Not just use the term Superman. Or have the term Superman in the song. Like, you know, the Eminem Rihanna song says, um, I have my cape to the wind. I'm Superman, you're Lois Lane. That doesn't count. Um, the song Holding Out for a Hero makes the reference. Um, it's going to take a, a Superman to sweep me off my feet. Those don't count. Didn't count those. Um, one thing that a lot of you might not know on this podcast, cause I don't talk about it. I am a musician. I was in a band for a while. The theme music that we have for the podcast is one of my old bands, uh, playing, um, and the bass player. I do love music. I have a very interesting history and past with music and the music industry in itself. I don't talk about that much. Um, I'm going to talk about it and tell the story to close friends. So it's sometimes music can be hard to discuss, but I do, especially pop music in a sense, or just like not orchestra music. Um, But I thought this would be fun. It's a different kind of homework. So what we did was instead of ranking all these songs, we took all these songs, listened to them, and then made our top 10. So what you're gonna hear is James. I don't know if it's exactly in top ten order, but I do have a top ten. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, you'll listen to James and I give our top ten, and we'll kind of talk about why and what that song represents, what was about it, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So in the show notes, you'll find the link to the document in my Google Drive that has the song title and the YouTube link, so you can hear the songs yourself. Most of them I knew. There's some that I discovered for the first time. And it was kind of interesting. There's one especially, and I'll talk about it. And uh, <clears throat> without further ado, we're going to get funky and rock out <laughs> to some Superman songs. So, starting with number 10, Superman Red, Mr. James Cole, what do you have? Oh, number 10. Um, yeah, 10 to 1, bro. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Like I said, uh, it's not in, in any particular order, but it is in a descending order. So um, uh, I went with Keith Urban's Superman. Oh, okay. We're going to clap just for fun, but okay. Why? <laughs> what? what? <clears throat> um. More of just a uh, uh, catchy tune, um, enjoyable song. Uh, you know the it, it's just yeah. Uh, I mean that's kind of it. You know, um, it's something that I could listen to. Mm. Um, that if I heard, I wouldn't just like have to change it or anything. I find it fascinating. There was there were some songs on the list where I was like about halfway three quarters through and I was like okay well I'm 
I'm done with that. <laughs> yep, I know. I know. There are. I agree with you. But that, you know, I was... I, uh, there are different versions of music and, and I don't have anything against it. I just, and I gave it a, I gave it a listen. There's, like I said, there's a couple on here that I was like, where did this song come from? Um, my number 10 is Superman by Goldfinger or the acoustic cover by Mike Herrera. Now I'm a big MXPX fan. Um, I got to meet them a couple of times. And I really, this song was cool. Like the original Goldfinger, Goldfinger was a punk rock ska band was cool. But when Mike Herrera did it acoustically, it just hit a much harder, like feeling for me. You know, the song says, here I am uh, doing all I can to be a Superman. And I feel like the song really talks about just like self-reflection of like this one borderlines, where is it about the character or about the idea of a Superman? But I feel like it can be introspective of like, if you, even if you are Superman looking at yourself, like, am I Superman and how I'm trying to be Superman? Um, so that's my number 10, James Cole, your number nine. Um, I went with uh crash test dummies. Had um, you ever heard this song before? So there was a, I had not. Um, so there's a lot of songs on this list that are just called Superman. Yes, there are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I think that's the name. I just wrote the, the band on this one. I think that was the name of it's the song. Superman's one. song is what the title is. Okay. I, um, go ahead. I had never heard. Okay. So I had never heard the, I've heard of the band. Um, I don't believe I've ever heard anything they've ever done. And I have not heard this song before. Um, the reason that it's number nine on this list, it's extremely unique. Um, and it's a very interesting way of telling stories through song. Yes. Um, like they very much just talk about reference Superman and things he does and Lois Lane and just, yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm not ready to talk about this song yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. But to touch on the crash test dummies, the only thing I had ever heard from them was the... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like a whole course where he just hums, and it was like... It was on one of those like VH1 like top 90s songs of the 90s or something. And they used to do those countdowns or whatever. In the good old days, yeah, and they were on there, but yeah, we'll talk. I'll this will be back. Um, my number nine, <laughs> I picked because it's one of Jania's favorites, and she likes to listen to it because it like always made her feel strong. And this was before we were even together. Is super I'm Supergirl by Crystal Harris, and I just it's one of those songs that Salo really likes, you know, um. And it's funny because Crystal Harris has like barely done anything musically. And for the longest time, some people put this online thinking it was pink in an early because Crystal Harris was kind of like a pink wannabe. Um, but that that is my number nine is just kind of I felt like it was really cool. And then after yeah, we was a, that was a good one before we were I just I'm going to throw out um, <coughs> before we do our number one, we'll throw in some couple honorable mentions. Um, but what's your number eight? Okay. Well, apparently I started one too low. Either way. <laughs> huh? Um, uh, oh, I said I think I started with my number 11. Um, but uh, right here I got uh, Charlie Poof, One Call Away. Nice. <laughs> um. Yeah, very good song. Uh, I I enjoy uh, I enjoy his melody, uh, his voice. Um, the songs are are very easy easy to listen to, um, and uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty good. <laughs> it, it is. Um, it's on here because of the dialogue of the song. But also the song was featured in Supergirl, the TV show. Um, and it's Jania's ringtone. 
um, when she calls me. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's been that way for a while because uh, she is my Supergirl, my Lois Lane, and my Wonder Woman all wrapped up into one. Um, my number eight, as soon as I find it, is uh, from this little pop punk band called Good Charlotte. It's called Superman Can't Walk. And I liked it just because it talks about, it, it referenced Superman, Lois Lane, even makes a reference to Dr. Evil in it. Um, but it talks about just like kind of being, being Superman and kind of being like just crippled by something. And it was my number eight. Number seven, James. Cool. Um, well, actually. I'm going to be going, it's, it, this is my actual number eight, but I'll do number eight and number seven. Okay. I'll like throw... I, said, I accidentally started with my number 11. All right. So you want to throw in your number 11? Real yep. Quick? I'm going to throw it real quick. <laughs> my, no... <laughs> my number 11 is Superman by Unwritten Law. Unwritten Law is a, if you kind of catch, you'll figure out my group is a punk rock-esque uh, alternative band that I got to meet and see. Um, back in the early 2000s. And the chorus is, oh yeah, I'm Superman. Here I come to save the day. Um, it's a, I, I love this song, but it, it just barely made the, you know, the cutoff. Yeah. So that's my number right. 11. So we're making our uh, top well. 11 songs. <laughs> All right, James. That's my number 12. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, anyways, number eight is um, Laszlo Bane. I'm no Superman. Also known um, as the theme from Scrubs. I was gonna say, I think, yeah, uh, I think it's it, it. I think that's where everybody would know it from. Uh, I'm no Superman. Uh, the theme from Scrubs. Uh, very nostalgic for the show. Um, you know, just just the theme song pulled me in to watch the show from the very beginning. Um, you heard Superman like, and, what? and yeah and so I watched it and great show for with a great song uh, title song and yeah all right what's your number seven um my number seven is Tom McDonald Superman this okay I'm just gonna uh, this. I just discovered this song on a whim like it's brain like it came out like a day I found it a day after it came out <laughs> Uh, it it kind of was like re, like stuff that I had looked up on like Apple Music and stuff like as part of my it just popped up, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna add this to the list. <laughs> um, and ironically, it's my number well, twelve. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, it's actually a really good song. Um, he's he's an interesting musician. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you've heard any other of his songs. When I showed um, Jania, she's like, "Isn't he like a big rapper or something?" I'm like, "I don't know." And then we looked him up, and yeah, uh, yeah. So he he is a rapper. Um, he definitely looks like um, like some kind of punk guy or whatever. Uh, tattoos like he's tattooed on his face, his head, like he's full body covered. Um. He usually does rap songs and things. Um, the 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 interesting thing about his music is he's very, um, very extremely socially conscious um, about the music. Uh, really, you know, like attacking the attacking the system on how on how it puts people down. Mm -hmm. um, uh, among a lot of other things, racism, all kinds of stuff. Um, he he's is a musician who is not afraid to um, touch on on issues, um, which is is why I have enjoyed uh, a lot of his music. But then I listened to this, which I had not heard before. Um, it literally only came out three weeks ago. Exactly. Apparently. See, <laughs> so. <laughs> exactly it was, the, it was the day after it dropped on apple music I that saying, I found. yeah you just yeah you just found it just before you made this list <laughs> um but yeah really good song and the fact that uh he plays it acoustically um right and uh 
this is a song I wish I had like spent more time listening to and and um like took some lyrics from you know but uh he definitely sings about like superman coming to save the day he's playing in front of a in front of a missile um and he he is just he's singing about like superman uh disarming and saving the world kind of a thing yeah and I'll make a com like I'll make a comment about his song again later because there's two songs on here that I kind of wish were blended together. We'll talk about that later. All right, my number seven is Superman by REM slash The Click because I didn't realize that the REM version was technically a cover. And this song I had heard and knew but had forgotten about. And it's the one that's like, I am, I am, I am, I am Superman. Um, but yeah. Um, the Tom McDonald one was like, like I said, it was my number 12. It was close. It was, I liked the message, but it was really close. All right. Now we're officially on the same page. Number six. Mr. Cole. Uh, number six is Remy Zero, Save Me. And if anyone's like, that doesn't even talk about Superman. If you can't, if you cannot, you cannot disassociate that song with Smallville. Like, it doesn't say Superman in it, but it is a Superman song. Okay? It's my podcast. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, any any song that is a full-on, like, musical song like we're talking about, music, music playing, uh, lyrics, you know, it was written, it, it's, play, it's played before Smallville. It is a Superman song. <laughs> I mean this this song still like when we get to the chorus, like it still gives me it just like gives me chills and makes me want to like, just like stand up and like you know, hold yourself higher. Like Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, Even though the band is broken up. It just we makes always you feel good. remember this song. It, you never if you're a band, never never write a sell your song to be a theme song for a show because that'll be your one hit and only hit you'll live off royalties from that forever if it's a you know a hit show like the rembrandts um, the rembrandts i'm guessing remy zero maybe still <laughs> um but if you're already an established band and you've been doing it and then you sell a song that's different <laughs> but i'm just i'm just saying <laughs> um all right, my number six, Spin Doctors, Jimmy Olsen's Blues, from the album Pocket Full of Kryptonite. This is just a fun, interesting song because it's about Jimmy Olsen interacting with Superman and Lois Lane and having a thing for Lois Lane. And I just like the saying, you know, Pocket Full of Kryptonite. <laughs> like, I got a pocket full of Kryptonite. Um, it's a fun song. Like I always love the album title, and you know, of course, this is the Spin Doctors album that has uh, two princes on it. You know, the song everyone knows them for. And then, yeah. I, and then I saw this. Like, this is one I've known about, but I saw it years ago. Like Jimmy Olsen's Blues. Well, by golly, what is that? <laughs> and I listened to it, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. So I highly recommend anyone just check out these songs and sample it. It's a it's a fun list. <clears throat> like, right. it sounds it sounds exactly like I've, i'm pretty sure i've heard this song before um unless they have a song that sounds another song that sounds exactly like this i know this song i like this song and i've always like i've almost always known of this song for mostly as long as i can remember <laughs> so we're getting into our top five and i'm really curious of what they're gonna be like there's no, I'm two... betting they're probably similar. Well, I th but the thing is, you've already named some of mine that are on the top five. I think I think really our top three is where we're going to duke it out. But yet, um, but maybe not. I, I'm kind of interested what our number ones are going to be. So, all right, but here we go. Number five, red. Uh, our lady peace, Superman's dead. Mm -hmm. 
also uh, just another one of those songs that, um, one of those songs that like I've known for years. Mm -hmm. Just um, really good song, really catchy beat. Um, something that you know, listening to the radio is you know would have heard on the radio. Oh, I remember it coming out. Because his voice is just why it's just Yeah. Now I did see Our Lady Peace in concert and they played this song. And the irony is they played they were on tour with another band on this list. Yeah. And you know what? I probably saw that band with somebody else, not not <laughs> um Our Lady Peace. <laughs> so I will mention when we get to that band. Me too. Who it'll be. Um, but I'm assuming we're still talking about the same band. <laughs> we probably are. Um, <laughs> um, the only thing is I'll say about Our Lady Peace in concert was their song at the time was, uh, I, think it's, I think it's called Gravity. And it has a really big chorus on the recording. But live, it was like not that thick, full chorus. I don't know because they weren't going to play with backtracks and have like orchestration on the album. So it felt so weird when they played it live. And it was just like this very thin chorus. Mm. You're like expecting this big kind of swell and like, <coughs> um, excuse me, but right. My number um, five. Oh, good. Well, I was just going to say before we really get into it, cause I, I probably have a little more to say about these other ones coming up, but, um, you know, the fact of, Tyler being a musician, he has like some more insider appreciation for the songs. Whereas I'm just a music enjoyer, you know, just a listener, just enjoy. <laughs> like some of these I've actually like learned to play or have played for fun. Um, I enjoy playing instruments, but for me, when it, it never really came down to like the whole, the whole rhythm and making the music it was kind of like just trying to play the notes in the order and the way that they're you know set and mm -hmm. timing and everything it was it it felt more way more technical to me gotcha i believe everyone can play so it didn't the, really work out <laughs> everyone can play an instrument they just have to find the right one that's my core belief uh my number five is Superman song. I played the violin pretty good when I was younger. I tried the viola. That's where I started. Once I started with the viola, and then my school got an upright bass, and I did that, and that's what carried me on. I took guitar lessons just to learn. Uh, I took drum lessons just to learn, because um, just to get the rhythm. And I, I would have liked to have kept. I didn't want to be a drummer, but I would have liked to have kept up with the lessons just to help practicing the different coordination it takes to play drums. Well, it's just, I mean, speaking of drums, it is very different coordination just, just from playing rock band. Like, I mean, it is incredibly different coordination to play I the can... drums than it is to play, because uh, I played a guitar, and I played a violin, and I played a piano, and it's very different playing the drums than it is playing. <laughs> I could never play rock band, because I, cause it was, I always wanted to play it like with a rhythm, like I was playing an instrument, but you're not, you're just just playing with you're playing it like a controller like i actually played it yeah. with the controller one time and did better than trying to play it with like the faux instruments but yeah um well i think especially since you know how to play like the guitar i think maybe if you if if like if you knew how to play the drums and you were playing the drums and you played it on a higher difficulty that way like you were going all over for Maybe. all of the the colors, it might feel a little different, but I can absolutely see that. Yeah, it's just it's playing music with a control. Yeah, I'm just I'm not a gamer, but my number five is um, <clears throat> the Crash Test Dummy Superman song. I had never heard this song, and I feel like out of all these, this was probably like the diamond in the rough because it is an older song. And it is so somber and mellow, but it's a beautiful story of Superman. You know, the chorus is like, Superman never made any money. Um, it started off weird, because like, Tarzan, 
I'm like, yeah, okay. And then it t- goes like Clark, and I was like, okay. And then like it mentions, you know, he never m- fighting Solomon Grundy. He's like, they had to move on, forget Krypton. I'm like, okay. Like this song is pulling references and really digging into like the mythology of this character. And it really was a reflection, I think, of Superman and like just telling his story. And it was just like, why is this song not more well known in the Superman community? Right. So it was, I think it was the interesting the interesting like starting off with Tarzan and then the whole middle section being like talking about Superman and then kind of doing a little Tarzan thing in the end, but then turning it back around to Superman is is a little interesting and weird. Yeah. But otherwise, like you said, like the the um the mythology telling like that that story the way they the way he does um about Clark Kent and Superman, yeah. It was it was a good song. Very unique. <clears throat> All right. James Cole, number four. Uh, my number four is Spin Doctors. Nice. And since it wasn't so far off, I kind of just went in and talked about it then. Because <laughs> it wasn't that far off. And I don't have a whole lot more to say. Um, just a, a song that I enjoy. Song that, uh, you know, turn it on. It, that I would put on, like, a Superman Spotify playlist. Oh, yeah. Of all just Superman songs. <laughs> all right. My number four is a song that I often reference. And I uh, reference a song about James. Is Waiting for Superman by Chris Daughtry. Um, I come to really like this song more like i think i heard it once before but then like last year when i visited james it was on i've come to appreciate it more and i've listened to like acoustic versions that daughtry has done live um solomon sailor really liked this song solomon especially um of course like you know it's it's a story of a girl wishing she um was dating you know superman and she's waiting for like her superman but yet there's enough references that actually be about Superman. Um, and earlier I mentioned, like, I love the structure and the way that Daughtry does this song. But if I could mix two songs together, it would be Tom McDonald's and Daughtry. Like, I would love to hear, like, a song like Waiting for Superman, but be about the context that the Tom McDonald song is. Hmm. You know, about the world needing yeah. Superman and waiting for Superman to save us. And like that whole like social like of needing the savior and stuff because I love the dynamics that Daughtry does in his song like how it just keeps building it stops you know it starts on acoustic slow build and then you know when we get to like <clears throat> the second chorus it's like just like really like doom, doom, like driving you know and I love the dynamics of it um, but you know it is just kind of about a girl wanting a good relationship and waiting for her, you know, super, instead of like her knight in shining armor or holding out for her hero, she's waiting for her Superman, waiting for Superman. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my number four, the James Cole theme. All right. All right, here we go. Top uh, three. Number three, James. Uh, number three is three doors down kryptonite. What's that song, James? What's that song? Yeah, yeah. What is that? Um, well, this is this is the band that um, I've seen this. I've seen them three uh, twice. Uh, they played they played the the arena here, um, and they play and they had uh, they played with Shine Down. So actually, two different tours, and they were on the same same uh, same band, just different openers. Uh, my uh, my number three is also three doors down <laughs> so we can just talk openly about this one that was gonna say this is the one i would this is the one i think this is the one we were both referencing yes i saw it was <laughs> seether our lady <laughs> peace and i think shinedown was supposed to be on that tour but had to cancel because 
they weren't there. So it was just Seether, Our Lady Peace, and Three Doors Down. Hmm. So uh, I don't remember Seether uh, on the on the tour. I do remember Three Doors Down and and Shine Down. I saw Shine Down later with Seether and Hailstorm before Hailstorm actually was known and actually had their album. Oh, out. interesting. It was that a great like concert. A good show. Oh, it was. Yeah. Shine Down is amazing live, and it was when oh, they. Oh yeah, did, they're really good. It was the first time they had done their Simple Man, but done it as a full band. They hadn't released a recording of it yet. They just had the recording out of like the acoustic version. Oh my nice. god! Just hearing the whole band do that was amazing. Heck, this this was this was when they this was when they came out. Yeah, uh, Simple Man and Forty Five, um, before their next album even had come out. <laughs> we probably saw the same tour. But you know, like sometimes, because <laughs> I saw them in Columbus. Um, and you know, right, sometimes they came to Toledo here. Sometimes bands will go on tour and like they'll have a, like a band or two that'll come for a while and leave. But you know, I mean, Kryptonite, it's in the title, you know. But you know, the chorus is, "Would you still call me Superman?" And it is kind of like you can look at it, the character in a sense talking and singing almost like he's singing to Lois like what happens if I lose it you know would you call me Superman um it's a great song I mean it's one of those songs that got played everywhere but you go back to it and you see where just that opening guitar riff and I mean the video is crazy about an old you know retired superhero running around um but it is just it is a really good song yeah, yeah. It is. It's one of those songs exactly. that's like really simple to play that gets monotonous. Like if you're the bass player, because you're just playing the whole thing the whole time. Um, no. Like, doom, doom, like um, but it is a. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's definitely a banger. Everybody knows the song. If you play it, everybody <laughs> will will have a good time to it. Um, I think I know what your number two know. is. <laughs> <laughs> You want to guess or <laughs> no? I'm not going to guess because we're about to do it. But I'm like, just based on where we're yeah. at, I'm like, well, yeah. Um, well, my number two is Five for Fighting. It's oh nice. shit! Nice. Um, I would have been wrong. I mean. What's up, everybody? Chase Smith here from the Chase Smith Podcast and Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast. And I'm JD, host of the Hyman Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And we are super excited to bring you a brand new show starting next Tuesday, the Fanfare Podcast. The Fanfare Podcast is all about your favorite movies and our favorite movies and the best moments in cinema. To help guide our discussion, each episode will feature one classic. And we will grade this movie using a report card-like scale A through F. We're going to be grading categories like acting, directing, cinematography, the score, and even the movie poster itself. And we're not featuring a movie report card. We'll be sharing our movie rankings, franchise deep dives, actor and director interviews, and everything in between. Movies have been a major part of our lives, and we cannot wait to share our thoughts with you. Our premiere episode will drop Tuesday, June 27th, and JD and I will be reviewing Raiders of the Lost Ark in preparation of the release of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on June 30th, the fifth installment of the franchise. Join us on the Fanfare Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Here at Krypton Report, we believe in the power of podcasting, the power of speaking your voice and speaking something that comes from you. So here's a couple of podcasts you can check out with people sharing their voice. I am Brian Peters, the creator and host of Gravely Amusing. For the past 30 years, I've studied the history of gods and monsters in pop culture and our world. As a student of theology and history, 
I've tried to understand evil and its impact on us. As a writer, I've tried to share this knowledge. As a comedian, I've tried to make people laugh as I do it. But as a man-child, I'm still that scared seven-year-old boy. Join me as I share the history of horror and sci-fi, discuss classic and modern pop culture, and share a creepy story or two. This podcast may scare you, it may horrify you, or it may leave you gravely amused. Listen to Gravely Amusing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and wherever podcasts are found. Follow us on Twitter at Gravely underscore Amusing or on TikTok at Gravely Amusing. Hi, I'm Taria Maynard, and this is my co-host, Jania Patrick. We're a couple of sisters in Central Ohio who created a podcast. Our podcast is called The Confessing Heretics. The basic premise of the podcast right now, as we see it, is we're going to talk to you guys about um, our stories in religion, would you say? Mm -hmm. Um, This podcast is about sharing our truths, our religious traumas, and our histories. We'd love for you to join us on our journeys as we talk about our pasts and discover more about ourselves along the way. We will be featured on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Just look for The Confessing Heretics. We have a $1 Patreon. Yes, I know everyone asks for money, but our $1 Patreon each month gets you commentary tracks for releasing movies, DC movies. It gets you my requel series where I pitch ideas about movie sequels, prequels, or whatever. It also gets special bonus episodes of whatever else some of the friends of the network chime in and drop. So check that out for $1 a month. That's all we ask. Keep it cheap, keep it simple, and help us keep going. Check out the link in the show notes or Patreon Krypton Report. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, Keep listening to the Krypton Report. So I definitely would have been wrong, but you know, yeah, what you got. interesting. I'll I'll have to I'll definitely have to ask after we get there, unless you know my number one is whatever. Um, oh, it, it better be, or else I'll be really shocked. But <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure you probably know exactly what my number one is at this point. Um. Uh yeah, I just it's it's a really good song. Um really great song, uh emotional, really speaks to, you know, Superman just being a person who goes through um uh emotional turmoil like the rest of us. Yeah. Um and uh they played it on Smallville at least once, maybe twice. <laughs> oh, I totally for um, it was on Smallville. It, it was they had this song on Smallville, and um, it was actually the first time the word kryptonite was ever said on the show. <clears throat> was in this song because they hadn't actually used the term kryptonite yet when the song played. Yeah, because it was definitely a, a a moment with Lana, and I'm thinking it was the drive-in moment. Um. Maybe that was another song, but I'm thinking that's when it was with Lana when he put on a drive-in in in the, uh, on the side of the barn for the two of them to watch cartoons and eat popcorn. Yeah. I'm thinking that's the first time it was in there or the time because it was very early on. Well, speaking of Smallville, um, my number two is Remy Zero Save Me. I just feel like this is a song that's like it's so synonymous with Smallville and you know the course is somebody save me um it's like this it's like the anthem for the person needing superman and at the same time if you look at it in the context of Smallville like Clark sometimes needs saving from himself and you know his self doubt um but he does a whole lot of saving in that show so I was going to say kind of, uh the uh it's like <laughs> the somebody the 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 coming from the perspective of the person who needing saving I'm like that's every single episode like it's a perfect yeah. it's a perfect song So here we go <laughs> number 1 
and we would have honorable mentions here, but we already named some since James started on 11. It wasn't Number numbered. One. It was just on a checklist on my phone. <laughs> Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> All right. What is your number one? Uh my number one is Daughtry, waiting for Superman. Yep. See, um, I thought that would be your number two, but Oh yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was kind of thinking. Um But uh yeah, I mean for for so many of the reasons uh that you said, um one being, you know, you talked about you being here and listening to it because it was playing, um, it was playing for the baby. Uh, the baby is, is, uh, a rockhead like all of us, <laughs> certainly like me. Um, you know, uh, her nap time music has been disturbed. Well, you know, it's, it's a little different now. She's two things have changed. She's not exactly like laying down for a nap and we use more soothing sounds but for a long time she wanted music and it was always disturbed and five finger death punch and um uh amy lee evanescence and um uh mm. daughtry um and and she really liked daughtry and and i mean that's part of why if anybody's seen my spotify story <laughs> that Daughtry was like my top listen to artist of the year. Um, I'm surprised waiting for Superman wasn't the top song. Um, but honestly, that was a Spotify random thing playing, you know what I mean? Playing a song more than it played mm -hmm. others. Uh, so, but yeah. Uh, and, and the music video is plays out that, story of the song of of uh, a girl waiting for her superman um somebody to save her um and and care for her and uh you know in the music video is I, i'm i'm blanking on the actor's name but he was um john connor in the terminator television series oh uh, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Yeah, yeah, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. He was John Connor in that, um, and he plays uh, a young man who, in his own right, is downtrodden, like the girl waiting for him, and he, um, uh, he's getting into trouble and like like uh, uh getting kicked out of places and like being chased by the cops and being like beaten up and stuff and he ends up like going and helping her in in a situation and they kind of walk off together so i enjoy the video playing out the story um very well so just just the correlation, the song, it's uh, it's very enjoyable for me, and um, you know I think the you sent me a link to an acoustic, and I really like that uh, as well. I like a, a a lot of acoustic versions of a lot of different songs as well. Yep, that's kind yeah. of that's kind of a that is kind of a a very. Um, one of my favorite things um, to listen to when I'm listening to music is like acoustic, uh, acoustic sets and stuff. It's so interesting. Acoustic songs, you can hear like when it's really good. And then I hear some that I'm like, that is not that great. Right. Like Nirvana's unplugged acoustic set, uh, you know, freaking how yeah. many years ago now, <laughs> how many decades ago now? See, I love when you can do a good acoustic and you do, like you make the drums more like drums are an acoustic instrument, but like yeah. playing with some brushes, but then you get a good acoustic electric bass, you know, thrown in there. Like I'm not a huge fan when people do quote unquote acoustic songs, but then they throw in a piano, um, but like a good, a, a rock, like back to unwritten law did a whole album. It was like a greatest hits album. So it was all acoustic. It was called uh music from the high place or something like that. And nice. just the arrangements, they all used acoustic guitars, like the acoustic bass. It just really kept the feel of the song, but in an acoustic way. And it was 
It was really, really good. <laughs> oh yeah, I've uh, all right. I, I've I've got a bunch, um, or at least I did at one point. Um, you know, there's uh, a beautiful lie. There's an acoustic version of that that's really good. Uh, some Aaron Lewis playing some acoustics. Um, oh crap! What's some other ones that I've listened to over the years? Ah, I, I think about that. <laughs> So, all right, my number one is It's Not Easy, Five for Fighting. Um, I think this is a beautiful song. It's emotional. It gets me, you know, the imagery of the song. Um, it's fun to play. Like, the chords are very simple to play. Um, it's actually a very similar, it's a very, it's a chord arrangement that's not that unheard of. Um, but it's the way you play it that puts the emotion, and I think it is a very reflective song of like is the character, especially I think of, of the time when it came out because Smallville was just starting. It's very much a theme for that character. There's like a beautiful edit on YouTube where someone took clips from all kinds of different Superman properties to the song. And it just makes the, the feeling of the song and the story of the song, like, and it's even visceral in its description of things like, like the home I'll never see. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just a man in a silly red sheet, just a man looking for a dream. Like it, it is so much to the character, but just how a lot of people can see themselves. Like, it's not easy to be me. Like, you know, there are people who have difficult jobs and difficult lives and we can all kind of be our own Superman and just the good that we do. And I think it's, um, a song that you can kind of carry with you and make it a companion to you. Um, but yeah, that, that's my number one. <laughs> um, well, I mean, great stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there, there's no wrong answers. Um, oh no. And like I said, like picked, uh, besides, like besides that... your top three, four, five, maybe like the rest of them could rotate. It was good. We didn't have all the same stuff. No, <laughs> like we had a couple difference out there, and I enjoyed that. I didn't think I, enjoyed... I didn't think we were gonna have Superman Lover on here. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the one by the Brothers Four or the Stereophonics. That's my number twenty. That was garbage. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was curious of what would show up, and um, I do think it's funny. The only one we had the same was number three, and it was uh, Kryptonite. <laughs> But everyone, check out the show note links in the bottom. Uh, make your own list. You know, make your own top ten or make your own. Uh, I think top ten is fun because I thought James and I would have a very much similar top five or even top three, and we proved to just have the same three. Um, number three, that is. So it 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 really can vary on what your opinions are. Check it out. Let us know. And remember. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information.